Johnny Vegas, welcome to Private and Public Gallery. This is the first time that you've exhibited not just in Jersey, but your work, full stop. Um, tell us a little bit about the three ceramic pieces that we have in front of us here. These three ceramic pieces are the result of working out of Emma Rogers' studio with Emma and her introducing me to a method of making I'd never used before, or never, never worked in this style and sketching with clay, getting that sense of movement. I've always worked with very flat slab, almost more architectural builds. So this was entirely out of my comfort zone. You've been involved for, with ceramics for, for many years. In fact, you did a degree in ceramics at, at Middlesex in North London. Well, I would say, that I would actually, I'd take it back a little bit further to sixth form. That was always of interest to me. I'd been talked out of it then was determined to get back into it in air level. And I had a teacher, Stephen Atter, who was a ceramicist, and there weren't many art teachers about that could specialise in ceramics, you know what I mean? That sure, had a history sure. in ceramics. Yeah, yeah. We had a really good ceramics department in our sixth form, which right. would be unheard of now. Yeah. So going to college, and suddenly I was in this environment 24 seven with creative people. And there was this sense of belonging. It was it was probably the happiest time in my life, and it was a, it was a, a it took a long while to get to a place where I felt anywhere near as contented. This piece was part of Grace and Perry's show, uh, and the theme was dreams. I took dreams as ambition, and and things coming to fruition, and dreams coming true. And this was a young guy I used to see every day who so reminded me of me when I walked my son to school. And every day he'd pass me, and every day he had the weight of the world on his shoulders, and he looked like that misfit. All his gear was knock-off, not quite, you know, the stuff, everything that kids pick up on yeah. and pick on you for, that was him. And I kind of, I never forgave myself for not stopping him and going, it comes good. Yeah. It comes good. Everything that's painful now, everything that makes you feel excluded, will be what will draw people to you sure. later on. You know what I mean? Don't trade in you yeah. to be more like them because they'll want to be more like you. I promise you. This work, this feels very much more about you. This is my pull down man. This is the moment of an emotion that I'd been really carrying around and I didn't know how to come to terms with and I wanted to share it and this idea of, has my life been a success or failure? As a comedian, is it time to give that up? You know what I mean? Do you have that bit where you're great and then it's time to let go and look for something else? And at art school, I'd always promised myself that I wouldn't continue a career out of fear. And a lot came out when I made him. Everything about this is about the notion of success. What does it mean to be a success? This achievement, this throne, what he's built for himself, this, this crown, everything within, I think, fame up here is, is, is such a fickle mm. and can wane and can bend. And do I exist? Am I purely there to entertain? And also what encapsulates is um, comedy, I've always thought of as the, uh, the arena of the unwell. Right. There's something wrong with you that makes you want to be a comic. And, and, and this is, it's me very honestly going, I'm not entirely sure if I'm happy with how everything has worked out in life. You also work in 2D, and we've got a very beautiful example of one of your most recent prints. This is the first edition of 25. It's a female form, as we can see, with, with, with wings coming off of the back of it. Um, what was the original inspiration for this piece? This is part of a journey over the last year between the ceramic figures we, we, we looked at earlier, of flight, of transformation, of faith, of religion and that, that how wings are represented as, as, as a release and that transformation of how do we go about attaining the thing of, of, of either faith or, or, you know, living forever, whatever it is. There's a freedom, but it comes at a price. Sure. And everything comes at a price. And I think it's that, that pain of transformation 
So you're making effectively a piece of clay? Large slab of clay, over A1 in size. Right. And I will work on, paint a background colour on. I'll have a rough idea in mind whether I'm working for one of the, the figures I've printed or, or, or just the sort of a feeling or the emotion of that, that moment of, there's moments of transformation that I want to get. Yeah. And I think I'll be working with the shadows. And then, so what I'll do is paint a, a, a basic outline of it. But again, if I tried to paint exactly what I want, for some reason, I'll overwork it. It won't yeah. be quite right. It's the, so it's, it's more of a loose block. And then the confidence comes back. I, I'm, I'm more confident removing. Right. Than there's adding. A, you, there's an earthiness, there's a grubbiness to it. There's a, and, and that's what I wanted. It's not finished. This person, it's, it's like a part of our involvement. You know, as she's evolving, it's a messy business. I don't know her backstory. She's almost like the rebel leader of these other prints that I'm doing. And I don't know how she came about to be that. But there's a rebellion going on and she's at the forefront of it.